Hi guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel, Empower In. So in this video, we're gonna go over a disease process that you will see in med surge. You will also see this disease process most likely in real life as a RN or real nurse. That is tuberculosis. So stay tuned after the video because in the next videos, we're going to go over a nursing exam or NCLEX style questions related to this disease process. So definitely stay tuned for that. So we really hope that you enjoy this video and that you learn a lot. Also, I just wanted to throw this in there. Always remember that these videos are extremely content heavy. It might be too much to try to get on one setting. So make sure you don't get really frustrated with yourself if you don't understand everything the first time around. It's not a big deal. These videos really are meant to be watched more than once. And you can also go to my website and you can download the audio so that you can take it with you. All right, guys, without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is an infection of the lungs caused by that bacteria named Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is a contagious bacterial infection that begins in the lungs and can rapidly pass to any organ of the body, often affecting the kidneys, the bones, and the brain, traveling via the lymph nodes and bloodstream. Tuberculosis, which you will see abbreviated as TB, is known to be one of the oldest disease among humans, and today is one of the leading causes of infection and death in adults. According to the World Health Organization, about one third of the world's population is suffering from this disease at present, even though there is a live attenuated vaccine, BCG, which stimulates the body's immune response against the organism. There is still a high morbidity rate in some countries every year. Africa, Western Pacific, and Southeast Asia are the most affected areas, making up about 86% of all tuberculosis cases in the world. TB is highly contagious. It can spread from an infected person to a healthy person through the air by inhaling airborne droplet nuclei of the infected person. These these airborne particles come from the infected person through sneezing, coughing, laughing, and other forced respiratory acts, which is why someone close to an infected person on a daily basis will be at higher risk of getting infected, especially for example if they share the same room. If the droplets containing M. tuberculosis bacilli are large, they become embedded in the proximal airways, which do not cause any infection. The infection happens when the particles are small, enough to cross the upper respiratory defense and reach the lungs where they are planted in the subpleural spaces of the lower and middle lobes and then spread through the lungs. Once TB was a widespread infection but in the 1950s several antibiotics were developed which helped eliminate the disease in many countries. However some years later new forms of the bacteria are emerging which are resistant to the antibiotics which means the treatment drugs have no effect on them. These new forms of bacteria such as extensively drug-resistant TB and multi-drug-resistant TB are more dangerous and have affected many large cities of the world. Whether the active or latent form of TB infection, anyone with TB signs and symptoms should seek medical treatment as soon as it is discovered. Risk factors. Risk factors to be include the following. One, anyone that is exposed to a person with TB. Two, working in certain areas where TB is widespread. For instance, an insanitary congestion and overpopulated places such as nursing homes, refugee camps, and prisons. Also places where malnutrition is common. So in these places, people living and working in these conditions are at higher risk of becoming infected. TB is also more widespread in some countries around the world, including China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Traveling to these countries, working or living in these areas puts an individual at higher risk of contracting TB. Certain factors increase the risk of contracting TB, such as a weak immune system. Healthy people have strong immune systems, which helps them fight back the infection and stop the bacteria from growing and multiplying. And so they are less prone to diseases such as TB, even when infected. When such an individual has TB, it is known as the latent or an active form. In the case of a person with an inactive form of TB, the infected individual does not transmit the bacteria to 
others as they are not contagious. But their disease can grow anytime if their immune system does get weak. It can happen due to excessive load on the immune system, for instance, during a disease like diabetes, cancer, HIV, malnutrition, or if the person is too young or too old. In that case, the bacteria can grow and multiply. Then the person that was initially inactive can become active and have an active form of infectious TB. Most people who are exposed to TB, however, develop symptoms because the bacteria can live in active form in the body. However, all the signs and symptoms should be taken seriously and investigated because active TB can be fatal if left untreated. Signs and Symptoms Symptoms of TB differ according to the type and stage of the infection. Inactive or latent forms of TB, this is when the person is infected with TB, has a healthy immune system that fights the bacteria and doesn't let it grow or multiply. Hence, the bacteria remains inactive, causing no disease and no symptoms, and is also not contagious. If the person's health changes and the immune system becomes weakened, inactive TB can become active. Active TB When a person with a weak immune system is exposed to TB bacteria, the bacteria multiplies and grows. Active TB develops within a few weeks. It can also develop when the immune system of the active TB shows the following symptoms, such as productive cough for three weeks or more with green or yellow sputum, chest pain particularly while breathing and coughing, coughing up blood also known as hemoptysis, poor appetite, fever, chills, weight loss, malaise, drenching night sweats, fatigue, non-tender swollen lymph nodes, Active TB starts in the lungs, and if not controlled, it can spread to other parts of the body, such as the bones, kidneys, spinal cord, brain, and lymph nodes. However, that is very rare, and the condition is known as extrapulmonary or disseminated tuberculosis. Symptoms can vary according to the organ being affected. Diagnosis If medical history indicates the possibility of TB, the person will be given a series of tests to confirm the diagnosis. Common tests for detecting TB TB are a chest x-ray, sputum examination, and cultures. If the results from these tests are not enough to determine the presence or absence of TB, then IGRA, or interferon gamma release assay, and TST, tuberculin skin test, are also used for further confirmation. Chest x-ray. When there is a TB infection, the areas where there are patches of bacteria will appear white on the x-ray. They may also appear in the upper lobes of the lungs, which is kind of rare. Tuberculin skin test. The skin test resolution consists of tuberculosol or tuberculin purified protein. It is also known as purified protein derivative or PPD or Mantox tuberculin test. For this test, about 0.1 ml of tuberculin fluid is injected into the skin in the lower part of the arm and during the next 48 to 72 hours, the site of the injection is checked for swelling. A positive test will appear as a hard hard red bump called enduration on the injected site. The importance of this result depends on the size of the enduration the cutoff points for the positive reaction are determined by the clinical setting. For instance, if the enduration is 5 millimeters, the test is considered positive for people who are more likely to get active TB. For example, for those persons who have a weakened immune system due to HIV, or those taking medications like TNF, A inhibitors, corticosteroids, or use about 15 milligrams of prednisone or more a day, or those who have to deal with TB patients on on a daily basis or if they have a history of TB. If the induration, however, is 10 millimeters, the test is considered positive for persons with a moderate degree of risk for developing active TB. This includes people who work at prisons and refugee camps or work with immigrants from areas with high rates of TB. People who use injectable drugs or those who have gone through duodenal bypass surgery or gastrectomy, also to include persons with certain medical conditions such as diabetes diabetes, silicosis, which is a lung disease that is caused by breathing dust which contains crystalline silica, neck or head cancer, and or renal insufficiency. If, however, the end duration is 15 millimeters, the test is considered positive for people with no known risk of developing TB and who are not required to take the test, so it is considered positive. A false positive test can show up in individuals who have had the bacillae calmet 
Durin or BCG vaccine in the past. This is a TB vaccine used in areas with high rates of TB. It is rarely used in the United States. A false negative result can show up in a person that does not respond to the TB test. It can happen in people who are too young or too old, or people who have AIDS. A false negative can also show up if the infection is recent and the person's immune system hasn't reacted to the bacteria yet. Another test for discerning TB in someone is a sputum test. It is used to detect pulmonary TB and to look for acid fast bacilli, or AFB. It is also an important test for checking resistant strands of TB bacteria, which is helpful in determining the antibacterial drugs used. It needs, however, about four to eight weeks to complete the test. IGRA, or interferon gamma release assay, this test can be used in just a single visit. If the patient has a TB infection, the test can show a positive result. IGRA determines the reaction of the immune system to, to the TB bacteria. The FDA has approved two IGRAs, i.e. T-spot TB test and quantiferon TB, or gold in-tube test. Treatment. Treatment for latent TB. As discussed earlier, in latent TB, the bacteria is inactive, but certain conditions can cause it to become active and grow and multiply. The treatment of latent TB focuses on preventing the inactive bacteria from becoming active. Some approved medication regimens used to manage latent TB include rifampin, isonazide, and priazamide. Please note that the CDC has suggested that perizomide and rifampin should not be used together, as several cases of serious liver injury and death have been reported due to the combined use of these drugs. Active TB infection. Active TB infection treatment and regimens. The US Food and Drug Administration has so far approved 10 medical drugs for the treatment of active TB. About four of these medications are first-line anti-TB agents which are used as the base treatment regimens. These are priazamide, rifampin, ethambutol, and isonazide. Treatment regimens for tuberculosis drugs can have dangerous side effects, but generally they do not show up very often. All medications for TB are heavily toxic to the liver. Anyone taking these medications should contact their doctor immediately if they develop nausea, vomiting, dark urine, loss of appetite, yellowish skin, which can be jaundice, and a fever without any obvious cases that last more than three days. It is important that the patient follows the instructions for the TB medications as prescribed, and that he completes the course of treatment. Skipping drugs or leaving the treatment in the middle can make the remaining bacteria resistant to those medications, and it can produce drug-resistant strands of TB bacteria, which will cause treatment of the disease to be more difficult to manage. To make Make sure the patients properly complete the course of therapy. Directly observed therapy, what is called DOT, is used. This is an approach where the medications are managed by healthcare workers who visually see the patient take the medications and they can document that there is not a missed or forgotten dose. Prevention. In order to prevent tuberculosis, children and infants are vaccinated with the Bacille Kelmic-Rarin or BCG vaccine in countries with high risk of TB. In the United States, the BCG vaccine isn't recommended for general use, and the vaccine is not effective in adults. Active tuberculosis is very contagious. To avoid getting the active TB infection, do not spend long periods of time with a person that has an active TB diagnosis until they have been undergoing treatment for at least two weeks. As a caregiver for a TB patient, be sure to use the protective measures such as face masks as recommended by your facility. In summary, once upon a time, TB was a widespread disease. I recall stories from my grandmother of how she and her sister used to live in a TB sanitarium for a while as young girls in Massachusetts. In the 1950s, the disease was virtually wiped out with the help of newly formulated and antibiotics, but today the disease has resurfaced. We now have multi-drug resistant forms of TB 
and often it is very difficult to treat. We have a serious public health crisis in many large cities worldwide. The nurse should always adhere to protocols suggested for his or her safety when caring for a patient with TB. The fact is, if you have TB or your patient has TB in the active or latent state, medical therapy must be sought by the patient without delay and all precautionary measures of prevention for the family and friends of the patient and for the nurse should be strictly adhered to. Alright guys, we really hope that you enjoyed that video going over tuberculosis. So like I mentioned before in the beginning, make sure you stay tuned to the channel because we're going to be posting nursing exam or NCLEX style questions in the next few days. So stay tuned for that and I can't wait to see you in the next video. I love you guys so much. Bye! Thank you.